welcome. We're at All About Nutrition. It's the Wireless Mike Show. It's the pilot broadcast of it. That's awesome, man. Exactly. And who better to have the first interview be DJ Glenn, Hillbilly Highway. Rumor is you're the man, the myth, the legend. I, I don't That's, know. Uh, maybe a myth. Maybe a legend in my own mind. I don't know. <laughs> All at different times, right? right? You know, I appreciate check you having me on the show, man. This is awesome. Oh, no problem. I heard a lot it's, of good things about you. Oh, well, same to you. Yeah. Awesome. We'll pay off the people that yeah, it's talk like twenty five, fifty bucks and a hamburger. Bobby <laughs> works easy. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's the rumor. Yeah, yeah right. I got you. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit. Your show, it's on live three sixty five dot com. Yeah, and as we said, Hillbilly Highway. Yes, sir. Kind of take us through how you got started in radio, right? For starters, and then where did it finally where the rubber meet the road about your own show? Started out as a young boy. That. I was just playing music in, in grade school. Okay. Um, I have some family that live in Los Angeles and Carmel area that are in the entertainment business. Uh, my aunt, who worked for Lou Irwin Productions. So she worked with uh, the Rat Pack and, and Sinatra and all those guys. She actually had an affiliation with a... Uh, they're no, no longer in business, so I can use her name, the Brownell Sound Company. Uh-huh. She knew them real well. She came into town one day and decided to buy me a complete DJ system, whatever I needed. Done deal. And, and then I started doing uh, little, like, uh, dances for 8th grade, ninth grade high, high school stuff. And how old were you when you got your first gig? I was uh, 15. School dance yeah. or, or private? School dance, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't go on a private one because my my, st- my stepfather wouldn't drive me around that night on a Saturday <laughs> night at 15 years old. Come on, Not to say Dad. that I wouldn't. Right. Not to say that I wouldn't, by <laughs> golly. And then, and then I, I had a friend that was in radio. Uh, and he said that I should probably go to school for it uh, because I knew a lot about country music. I spent hours in my garage listening to song after song after song, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure I knew a lot about music when I got into the radio business. So my timing was good. So when you're talking up a ramp, you're you're hitting the post every single time. Yeah, because you know in your sleep how many bars it takes to get to the intro. You can ask the guys that work for me. I used to carry a drumstick with me. I used to hit their hand if they were off. (laughs) I don't like chopping music. I like fading it. Uh-huh. Make sure you're doing the right thing. You know, you you have to give country music its fair justice when you play it. Sure. And I'm I'm all about that. So. Okay, so you're you're rolling along. Yeah. You're, you're you were a, a wee lad. Yes, sir. And it keeps on going. Yeah. So you get into radio. Mm-hmm. And I worked take over it from in there. Uh, in in Moscow, Idaho. Okay. I worked at I worked at a station in Colfax. Washington, which you're familiar with, yeah. Yeah, Lentil Capital. Yeah, absolutely. Lentil Fest. Yep. I went from there to uh, KUPL in Portland. Okay. And then over to KWJJ, which I, I did overnights. Ooh. So I was working at a bar, mm-hmm. and then and then I would have to get done from the bar at 2 or 30 in the morning yes. and be at the radio station at 5 <laughs> for the Sunday morning oldie and gospel show. Wow. Right? And was that... All you, or did you have something on no. tape you were playing and announcing? Actually, I had to switch it. We we took it out of automation and made it live. Okay. And, and then and the then reel I, the reels, yes, right? yeah, yeah. And then back, and then they and, and then they said, hey, uh, you know, we have a overnight position on the FM side. If you want it, so I was like, heck yeah, man! So I was working from ten at night until seven in the morning every Saturday night. Uh huh. Then in a morning show uh, came open a position. Mm-hmm. So I went and did the morning show for a long time there. Well, and, and for those who aren't really familiar with some of the radio stuff, yeah. the morning drive and afternoon drive, yeah. those are like the jewels Absolutely. of a job to have, right? Yeah. In radio, yeah, for sure. Yeah, in radio. Yep. And and uh, I stayed there for many, many years. I worked in Nashville. I, wor- I worked in, in uh, geez, Drain, Oregon, of all places, right? <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I kind of got ill. I uh, got the cancer bug. So I had to take some time off uh, for rehabilitation, uh-huh. and I hadn't played music in almost a year. Okay. So I had to take, I had to sell a lot of my equipment to pay for my medical bills. So I had nothing again. So I had to get a job, and and, and a friend of mine said, "You need to get back into music," because I was doing fabricating, because that's what my family does. They have a, a metal business. Oh, okay. So I was fabricating, saved some money, bought another system. And started booking some shows, and and you know the next thing you know, I'm I'm doing probably fifty weddings a year. Wow! So I'm super busy now. Mm-hmm. And then I, I I hadn't even thought about being in radio. And then a position came open at a station in Salem. Uh-huh. Uh huh. About a year ago, actually, 
And you knew someone who knew someone. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy's like, hey, they have a two hour slot on Mondays. Okay. Uh, do you want to fill it? So I went down because they have certain things you have to do. You, you had to pass the background check, FCC, but sure. and then go through their orientation. It's a lot harder than it used to be, Glenn. Man, let me tell you. <laughs> talk about feeling old. I right. was like, whoa. Give me your whole life on right? this form. So I, they, they hired me on a Thursday, and he said I had to have a show name uh-huh. by Monday. So I thought, oh, yeah, I can do this. No problem at all. Okay. So I'm, I, so I'm driving back from Salem. Mm-hmm. I'm excited, man. I got my own radio show now. I'm the business. Right. You're Didn't on the comeback th- trail. Yeah. It's it's all rolling. Still with no name. <laughs> so here's Friday, right? Yeah. And and, and st- guess what happened? Still, st- no name. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm on my way to the station. Uh huh. I'm in Camby, and the station's insane. I I took Highway 99. Okay. And and oh, my phone rings. Well, I, I'm listening to music, and and my phone rings, and I missed the call. I thought, oh, now what do I do? Here comes a song playing, Steve Earle. Okay. On the hillbilly highway. So that song was playing. Uh-huh. That's the last thing I heard. My phone rang again. It was the PD from Salem. Okay. He said, hey, are you on your way? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on my way. What's, uh, what's the show name so we can put it in the books? Uh, that would be the hillbilly highway. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, how it started. There it is. I can tell, Glenn, you are a procrastinator. Uh is that the rumor? Yeah. I'm getting a nod over here. Yeah, yeah. I think Katie would know best. I just want to savor the moment. Right. You're like, I got a show. The rest is details. Yeah. This is where it's at. So I stayed there for almost a year, mm-hmm. and I took a job at another station that didn't work out so well. Okay. But you know what? I used that as a learning curve. Right. It was good be- It was good there because I met a lot of nice people. Yeah. So the the job that I had gotten fired from was not a bad. I mean, nobody likes getting fired. Sure, but but I I have to understand it's it's their it's their station. Right. And then I get home that night. Yeah. And and I'm kind of sad because I had built a listener base. Yeah. With a lot of my friends here in Clark County. Well, and it's your passion. Yeah. You know, you're doing your passion, and right. that's that's big. I was one of the committee members for the Vancouver Rodeo for the last ten years. Okay. I do a lot of volunteer work with the uh, Evergreen High School Special Olympics, uh, Clark County Special Olympics. I uh, work a lot at, at the Clark County Fair. I do, I'm the MC, the voice of the Horse Expo. Okay. I was just crushed because I had lost what I thought I had lost. All my friends, oh, yeah, I got to listen, I got to listen, and then things happened. Right. So I got home, and my stepmom, because like I said recently, my dad just passed away. I'm sorry to hear it. And... Uh, she and, and her and I and Katie were talking over supper and and she said, why don't you guys just why don't you just start your own station? How much would that cost? I said, have you ever had a latte? <laughs> she said, yeah. I said, that's why they call them that because that's what it costs. It costs a latte. OK, so <laughs> you told them it cost a latte. <laughs> right. That's what it costs for to start your own radio station. OK, so I started doing some looking. And I have a friend who don- donated some powered mains speakers mm-hmm. and, and a, uh, a, a little piece of equipment, mm-hmm. a little mixing board. Didn't work out because I, th- I thought my buddy said, well, you started a podcast. I said, no, I'm starting a radio station. There's a difference. So it went from a four channel and then I got a 24 channel board, uh-huh. which I didn't realize that you couldn't use as a broadcast console. Oh. So after that thousand dollars went down the drain. <laughs> I, had, I went and bought some mics. I went and bought some Shure SM7Bs, mm-hmm. and I got a really nice set of headphones. And then I found out that the program that I'm running, uh, I had to have a custom computer made for it with a special sound card, $5,000 later for that. Wow. Then I had to have um, a broadcast console, so I had to go to, uh, it's, I run an Arrakis uh, AR-10, mm-hmm. so it's actually a, a, a regular analog Mixing board. Okay, so by this time, how much are you in time-wise oh. and financial-wise? So I'm into it now probably two months, two and a half months. Okay. And about eleven grand. That's not including the monitors that I had to get, uh, the crossover that I had to get, the CD players that I run. Okay. And the Radio Boss program. There's 400 bucks right there. Wow. One little box that sits on top of my mixer. It's called a JK... Uh, JK audio broadcast host yeah that's for my telephone uh-huh 500 bucks 
you have a lot of nifty stuff. Yeah. Let's yeah. put it that way. Finally, I finally get it all put together. And I and I and I thought, okay, now we're gonna set the world on fire. But I didn't know how to set it up. Right. I had no idea how to wire anything in. So I got the radio boss program going. Uh huh. And then it was like squeal. It was it was echo echo. It was horrible. Okay. I put a post on Facebook about needing some help. Two days before I was going to throw the talent, I was literally at the point. I'm, I'm right now. I'm twenty grand in, wow. mind you. Okay. I was ready to quit right. that that same day. I was calling my buddy at Gruen Guitars in Nashville. Yeah. And saying, "Hey, I have some stuff for sale, man. If you want it." Mm-hmm. Not even one minute later, my phone rings. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Glenn. My friend. She said, "I have a, a young man who is a computer programmer, and he loves music, and he said he's willing to help you." Fine. So I called this kid. I'm thinking to myself, for one, if he's a teenager, he's probably not out of bed at the crack of 1230, and he's not going to make it, right? <laughs> so I call him, and he's there in 15 minutes. I thought, well, sweet. Well, hey, wow. that's looking up. Even if he doesn't, uh, you know, at least he showed up. Right. So he goes into my studio. Uh-huh. I, by, by the way, after my dad passed away, I used his studio for my radio station. That's where it's at. So. Wow. He comes out like an hour later. He says, okay, I think I got it. Uh, what? What do you mean? He had it up and running. Wow. And so for two more hours, he had worked and worked and worked and worked all the bugs out. I actually went live that night. And you didn't even think you were going to have a show. I had no, I was going to sell my equipment the same day. Wow. I was that frustrated. I had, I mean, I had dumped every cent that I had saved into buying more equipment. My stepmother. I mean, bless her heart, bought this and bought this, and here, let's have this, and let's buy this. and You can only borrow so much, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Before you start feeling horrible Uh about yourself, for one. Right. So I got a hold of Live 365. Okay. They set me up with my stream, and two days later, I had my first show. Okay, so there's a lot of morals to the story, Glenn. Yeah. The one that I'm that's really getting on me right now (laughs) is the whole reaching out on Facebook. Yeah. Because I'll see people like, I need recommendations for. Right. And even if it's not something you're into, right? You're just sure. like, why would someone ask that? But there it is. Isn't because that crazy? someone might know someone, that whole six degrees game. Yeah, exactly. And boy, that paid for you in spades. Man, I tell you what, I have, I have, uh, like I said, I have 2,729 listeners as of today. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it, ha- it didn't start out that way, let me tell you. Wow. It was rough, man, because for the first three weeks, yeah. I had seven listeners. But I can track them now, you know. Yeah. Now I have listeners in the UK, and, and now my show is actually nationwide. That's fantastic. And international as well, so. Okay, well, it's speaking crazy. of that, I, I, I did a little, you know, I did a little investigating. Uh-oh. You know, <laughs> so I need to know why. I always saw Bob's. Uh, you know, post. Yeah. Hanging out with DJ Glenn. Right. Yeah, Billy Country. He's right. the man. <laughs> you know, I'd see that a bunch. So he already kind of put this swell in my head. Who right. is this guy? So I took a look. And I like when you go on there, you know, what, live365.com and select you. Yeah. Hibbley the Highway. I like how it shows the songs you played, the music mix. Right. And something I really liked, I like the variety of it, Glenn. I liked how you had the Marty Robbins, but then it was followed with Keith Urban, Brad Paisley combo. Right. Then a Johnny Horton, then a Blake Shelton. Sure. So I like how you're mixing the old school and some of the new school. Awesome. Because that's, I grew up in radio as well. Right. I mean, a little bit on the decade or two later, right? <laughs> right. But it was kind of the same thing. I remember mm. in 90s, country radio was really anything that was Waylon, Willie was not on. It right. was just all what was on the charts. Sure. Uh, yeah. Was that. So I always felt country radio, it wasn't like rock radio where they went into classic rock or sure. they they mixed it. Country radio was like this is it. That's all you get. So was that part of it too when you decide to start your own thing? Was well, it was a music mix or was it just be your own boss? Well, not so much be my own boss. Mm-hmm. That was about 10% of it because I just didn't want to get fired. And I get employee of the month every month. <laughs> the, biggest, up, the, the biggest thing for me <laughs> was was I, I put myself in the listener's position. Yeah. Commercial radio, you hear the same song over and all day long. Facts. I didn't want to do that with my station. I wanted you... Let's say, hey, hey, Glenn, this is Mike. Uh, can I hear Fishing in the Dark? Yep. And I want to be able to play it next. Yep. 
And, and I do. Mm-hmm. And I play your requests because that's what it was like back in in the eighties when we were in radio. You could actually put people on the air. It's true. And it's play true. requests, and so yeah, the listeners and the music music is is it for me. Uh huh. I'm also a washboard player, so I played traditional Dixieland jazz on the air. I did. Yeah. <laughs> my grandfather, when I got hired at KWJJ, it was sixty yeah. years to the day uh-huh. that my grandfather worked there doing a show called the Rooster Reveille Show. Uh huh. And he would play Dixieland music thirty minutes live. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And you got the washboard. Pretty out. crazy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, and something else I really liked besides showing you know the recent playlist, I even saw typically your p- replies within an hour. Yeah. I I saw that and I'm just like he's really in. Yeah, man. I, I love it. Yeah. Because the email, do you just have it on when you're yeah. on the air kind of thing? And something pops up. Yeah. Like, I have a social media. It. Uh, Katie, she does all my social media for me. So because I can't uh, run the show and do all right. my social media. Right. On my show every morning at seven o'clock, we have a, a segment called "Thank a Soldier." Yeah. And uh, and my friend Jeff Goffman wrote a song called "Miss America." We started with that. Mm-hmm. Then I talk about our soldier, and then I go into "God Bless the USA." Nice. And I did that on accident one day. I just decided to play "God Bless the USA," and ju- I just said, "Hey, I'd like to." Thank all of our soldiers out there for everything uh-huh. that you do. Because my dad was uh, in in the uh, Korean War. Sure. And I pretty much did it for my pops. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and my friend Lacey Jo Keller, who lives here in 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 Washington, she is a United States Marine. Mm-hmm. And so I started thinking, huh? The wheels were turning then. Uh-huh. So I decided I created a segment called "Thank a Soldier," where we take your name, your rank, uh, what your job was, if you have any special awards, and we we talk about you. And then I play the song for you, and it, this whole time it's being filmed. Uh huh. And then when we're done, we tag you, we send you the video, so you can share it with your friends and family. That's nice. That's yeah. great. Well, and I also saw you did doing good things. Yeah, that's that's segment. our Friday segment. Yeah, yeah. Where you were, where you find you nominate somebody in your community, mm-hmm. or or your uncle, your grandma, anybody, mm-hmm. somebody who does. It costs zero dollars to be a decent human being, and we know a lot of those people, and they're getting no recognition. Right. So what I do is I spend twenty five bucks with Mill Creek Pub, and we and we recognize them, yeah. and we videotape it, and then we send them a gift certificate, That's and we awesome. let them know, hey, we do, we know what you're doing, right? And we want to recognize you. So that's a big part, not only in my sobriety, but in my life and my show. Well, it's, it really seems like you're about the community, Glenn, yeah. With that, you're bringing it with the local like that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right, Glenn. Well, I'm I'm hoping. This all gets going, this wireless <laughs> mic thing, because I'd love to have you back. Yeah. Because I'd love to talk more about the industry and whatnot. And sure. you have, because I know you have lots of takes. Yes, sir. And I know you have a lot to, you know, go back on with yeah. all your experience. So we'll have you back. Have uh, send your people to uh, live365.com and search the Hillbilly Highway. Yes. And I liked how they had a spotlight on you, Live yeah. 365. It was December 30th. And yeah. I was like, it's a great way to end the year to find out about you isn't that awesome that's fantastic well i know that you're going to do good things i can tell already so you're always welcome on my show you want to come by the studio you want to you want to do a call in the number is 833 dj glenn Uh uh-huh that's 833-354-5366 right right inside the studio man you can call all we'll right. put you on the air. I don't care where you're at, whether you're at Fred Myers, <laughs> playing with your kids, doing good things. We may send you out to Mill Creek Pub. Oh, you, you know? stop that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> don't tempt me to do good things. <laughs> that, that, right? <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for the time, Glenn. And, yeah, hope to have you back. And, as I said, you already got people there. What are they going to get when they listen to you? Real quick, five, ten seconds. Great plug. music. A lot of fun. Uh, no pressure. And play request. All right. Time to take a ride in the Hibbley Highway. All right, my friend. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. I appreciate it. You bet. Take care. You too. Thank you so much. 